The more observant of you will realize I'm wearing the same that I was wearing at the end of the last video because it's the same day. I'm just finishing up the last video, editing it and putting it together. Uh, but I had some thoughts I wanted to record before I forgot them. And that is this. It, is it okay to be fat? Because there's a lot of uh, movements about fat acceptance and so on and so forth. And I guess the easy answer is it's up to the fat person, isn't it? Um, you know, uh, is it okay to be disabled? Is it okay to be whatever? Um, you know, if you don't like fat people, if you don't like being around fat people, that's a you problem, not a me problem. Um, if you are fat, then you make that decision for yourself. And there are, um, you know, obviously there, being fat isn't usually fun. Uh, usually you're limited in your mobility, you're limited in your, uh, you know, I dread going somewhere uh, where there's, you know, nothing but folding chairs or, or chairs with wheels or any kind of chair that I feel <sighs> may succumb to my weight and collapse. So there's that. There's um, restaurants. Now, most places are actually fairly accommodating, uh, but, you know, uh, chairs with arms in them. You know, you're wider than the arms, so you've got to squeeze in there. Then you've got to worry that when you stand up, you're going to bring the chair with you. Um, restaurants with booths. You know, sometimes you, the table is movable and you can shove it all over to one side and squeeze in on the other side. But, you know, um, and then there's, you know, issues of pain in joints and issues of... Uh, Medical issues, sleep apnea, heart disease, all kinds of things like that, that that affect the quality of your life. So is it okay to be fat? It's up to you. Are you willing to put up with um, the inconveniences and the medical problems and the pain that may come along with it? But one thing you should not have to put up with is society thinking that your weight is their business. Now, that being said, there are some people to whom your weight kind of is their business. And as a dad, I will tell you that I do feel guilt that I can't be as involved in my children's lives. And that was, believe it or not, one of the biggest emphasis, impetuses, impetai, whatever, the biggest reasons uh, for me to get on this journey for real. Um, and not because, ooh, you're going to die before your kids you have grandkids or whatever. No, um, it's a more immediate thing. And I think people are more motivated by immediate things, uh, which is just being able to be involved in stuff they do, being able to walk around with them at, a, at an event, you know, things like that. I, it started with the mobility scooter, uh, which was not a giving up. It was a making sure that I could be involved in my kids' lives. So I want to be more involved. We're going camping. That's a big thing uh, in a tent again. Uh, it means I have to get up off the ground. I'm going to have to figure out a lot of things that I haven't figured out in a while. Um, it wasn't great the last couple of times I've gone just because of, you know, getting off the ground with bad knees, but I'm going to do it. So those people, the people who care for you, the people who love you, the people who you love, people like your children, your spouse, or maybe even your parents, to them, they get a bit of a say. But how do you say it? It's not easy. I mean, I will tell you, I have a daughter, I have two daughters, but one of the daughters is significantly overweight, nowhere near like me, but I, I dread that that's her future. And how do you discuss it without it becoming nagging, without it being interpreted as nagging, without it just immediately causing them to shut down? I know I shut down. I, it takes a lot for me to actually listen to somebody trying to talk to me about my weight. I don't want to hear it. Um, I certainly don't want to hear it from a stranger. I s have difficulty hearing it from people who care about me. And there's no real easy way. Um, just let them know you love them. That's about it. And if there's a way to talk about it, talk about it. But it's difficult. I mean, I, I, I hated, literally hated my father sometimes when he would say simple things like, oh, I don't think you should put salt on that. 
you know, I mean, that's not a good reason to hate your father, but it was just, he was concerned. And I understand that. But, you know, all I heard was, ooh, you're fat and ugly and worthless. And he never actually used those words. Never even came close to using those words. But that's what I heard. And so, if you're losing weight, do it for yourself. Do it for those you love. Do it for a more immediate thing. Um, it might have been the movie The Core. It was some movie I saw. And it was about saving the world. And it wasn't the person who was mostly motivated, not about saving the world to save the world, but saving the world to save his children. That was the motivation. The world is too big to care about. Society is too big to care about. Your motivation needs to be more immediate, perhaps, than the ephemeral, oh, you don't want to die before your daughter gets married. Of course I don't, but that's not an easy thing for me to envision when it's going to happen. Um, and not a big thing like, because society says so, because of the following studies. No, because of you, because you don't want the pain. You want to be able to go out um, to eat without feeling uncomfortable, without feeling like you're putting people out. You want to be able to ride a roller coaster. Who knows? Whatever. Find your motivation. And realize that it's what you think that matters, not society. Society owes you nothing other than dignity. You are a human being. You are valid as a human being. You should not be ostracized or limited because of your weight. There are physical things that cannot be denied. The width of a door, the width of a chair. Those things are going to limit you. And, and, and there's not much you can do. Um, but dignity is something you're owed. Something society needs to give everyone. And that's everyone. That's uh, people with disabilities, mental disabilities, uh, physical disabilities, minorities, uh, people who are um, ex-convicts. They've served their time. Give them their dignity. Damn it. I was a corrections officer. I will tell you right now. Yes, there's a lot of people that they don't ever escape the life of crime. But you know what? Part of it is because they're not given a chance. So, yeah. Care about individual human beings. Understand that human beings, as human beings, are valid. In all shapes, sizes, colors, histories, everything. Everybody deserves respect. That's my rant. Going handheld this morning. Uh, sorry if it's a bit wobbly. Uh, you can see I'm a little dressed up. Uh, I've been doing some teaching, substitute teaching, finally getting some assignments going. Uh, it's Thursday. Uh, the assignments have been kind of wiping me out, um, which has been uh, a bit bad because I've allowed myself to get dehydrated and, and hungry. But then I've eaten, I think, too much a bit in the evenings. Uh, so the weight loss is kind of meh. It's there, but it's not very much. But, you know, it's midweek. So I, I don't count the midweek as official. It's just to give myself an idea. Uh, let's see. First assignment, of course, furthest away from the office. And pretty close to furthest away from a restroom. So a fair amount of walking, which is slogging away for me. Um, second assignment, which was yesterday. Um... Not too bad walking wise, uh, near a, a restroom. Um, students were very loud, like just loud. It's just the noise level, just loud. And these schools kind of allow, and they were all doing individual little group projects. So they're all in their little tables talking about their little group projects or, you know, doing something they shouldn't be doing, like playing Minecraft or whatever. Anyway, the point being, Noise levels were very loud, and I think that also kind of is a stressor. So that's part of why I think I felt very wiped out. My hair is terrible. Anyway, um, so we'll give you an update. We started with a rant. Sorry about that. I, something I felt uh, deeply about because there's a lot of, I don't know, a lot of hatred. And, you know, everyone, every one of you is a valid human being. Everyone has flaws. Just 
learn to appreciate the innate value in everyone. Anyway, take care of yourselves. Um, short little handheld one today. And, uh, of course, an update coming on Saturday. We'll see how that goes. And bye for now. Hello, good morning. Made it through another week. Um, as I hinted earlier, the, the weight loss was meh. And it was me, um, 477.2, which is a 2.6 loss. 2.6, is that right? No. Yes, 2.6 loss. Wait a second. No, 479.2, sorry. 479.2, which is a 2.6 loss. Um, what I did wrong was I didn't bring something to eat in the middle of the day, so I wound up eating more at night. And that's another thing that happens. If you have a lot of calories at once, um, your body can't process them all. So uh, uh, that's bad. So that's part of spreading out your food intake. Um, I've heard multiple times said, and it seems to make a lot of sense, that it's better to have multiple small meals a day than, than, than like a couple small and one big um, because the big meal is just too many calories for your body to deal with at once. Um, and uh, I have an appointment coming up at the end of May um, with the surgeon. And of course, after you have weight loss surgery, the, um, the uh, gastric surgery, you are forced, that's the whole point, to have nothing but small meals. And so you wind up having like six small meals a day. Um, and that first of all, doesn't overwhelm your system. So there's not more calories than it can process and deal with. And second of all, you have to make sure that, that it's a uh, highly nutritive, uh, protein intense, um, uh, a food that you're taking in. Um, so you don't get a lot of extra calories and sugars and things. Um, so it forces you to eat less and forces you to eat in a way that your body can process better. So anyway, it is a loss. We'll still call it a win. Um, and we'll see what happens next week. I don't have any teaching jobs lined up yet. I had one lined up, but it canceled. I don't know why it canceled. Maybe the teacher had plans that got canceled on her, so she didn't need, need to have a replacement. Anyway, I will keep you up to date as to what's going on. You keep me up to date. Um, I'm getting, you know, you're giving me glimpses of yourself in your in your comments, and I appreciate it. And the rant earlier, um, it's just something that I, I it's always bugged me. Um, I believe very firmly that everyone has intrinsic value. Um, I worked corrections, as I said, and. Um, I worked corrections in Canada, and then I worked in, in Indiana. And when I went, started working in Indiana State Prison, um, and it was time to lock everyone up, and I said, okay, gentlemen, time for lockup. And one of them said, who are you calling gentlemen? And I said, well, I'm calling you a gentleman. Uh, unless you prove otherwise, I'm just going to treat you that way. And they kind of went, oh, you know, and that's kind of, unless you show me that you are not worthy of respect, I'm going to respect you by default. And I think that's how people should live their lives. 